What's going on, everybody? I'm going to let chat GPT make me out of algebra test, and then we're going to take it, just see what it does. I'm just kind of curious. Make me out an algebra test. All right, let's see what we get. Simplifying expressions, solving equations, that looks easy. Solving inequalities. And then we've got some word problems. Oh, and we got some graphing. Oh, graphing inequalities too. All right, so let's go get started on this thing see how we do all right so here we are with the test so there's a there's a couple of things that kind of shocked me i was kind of surprised with the test uh it's it's pretty easy i think well, i mean it, it is easy and then at the end of the video, I'm going to show you something that really shocked me. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's, I mean, you know, here's the test. You know, we've got to simplify some expressions. We're solving some equations. We've got some inequalities to solve. We've got some word problems to solve. And then we've got some stuff to graph. So that's that's a screenshot of my iPad. And so what I did is I just took each part and kind of broke them up and blew it up so you can see it a little better. So, I mean, let's just look at, let's do number one. So you've got 3x plus 5x, that's equal to 8x. So that's pretty easy there. For number two, we got 4a minus 7a plus 2a. So all we're doing here, we're combining like terms. We got 4a minus 7a is negative 3a. Negative 3a plus 2a is negative a. And then problem three, we got 6 times x minus 2 plus 4 times 2x plus 1. So that's going to give us 6x minus 12 plus 8x plus 4. And so this is going to give us 14x minus 8. Okay. I mean, you can see it's not, it's not bad at all. So here we've got 2x squared minus 4x over 2. I know that doesn't look like a 4, but it is. And so, I mean, I mean, you can just cancel but I, I think what 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 you ought to do to write this is 2x squared over 2 minus 4x over 2 which that's going to be x squared minus 2x all right just kind of split them up okay let me erase this up here so we can work the last problem uh, this is number Five. We got 5y plus 3 times y minus 2 minus 4. So that's 5y plus 3y minus 6 minus 4. So that's going to be 8y minus 10. And there's, there's the first 5. So, and, you know, hopefully all of you think would think this is pretty easy. Some of you that are watching, some of you may think it's a little more difficult if you're just starting in algebra. All right, so now we've got some equations to solve. So let's go ahead and go through that. 2x plus 3 equals 11. So I'm going to subtract 3 to both sides. So 2x equals 8. Divide by 2, I get x equal 4. And then for problem 2, I've got 5 times x minus 1 equals 20. So we're going to clear parentheses, 5x minus 5 equals 20. Add the 5 to both sides, I get 5x equals 25. Divide by 5, I get x equal 5. And there's your answer. 
All right, so let's look at number three. I've got x over three minus four equals two. So what we're gonna do here is multiply everything through by three. So x minus 12 equals nine. So I'm gonna add 12. I'm gonna say nine, 12. Yep. I copied the problem down wrong. That should be equals two. And so that means this would be six. And so I add 12, so I get x equals 18. And then for problem four, I've got 4x plus 7 equals 3x minus 1. So I'm going to subtract 7 to both sides, and I'm going to subtract 3x to both sides. So I get x equal negative 8. And then for problem number 5, we'll work that here. 2 times x plus 3 equals 5x minus 6. Clear the parentheses, 2x plus 6 equals 5x minus 6. Uh, subtract 5x to both sides. Subtract 6 to both sides. So I get negative 3x equals negative 12. Divide everything by negative 3. I get x equals 4. Okay. And, and you know, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you get enough, enough, enough thumbs up, I'll get ChatGPT to make me out. Maybe a trig test, calculus test, and we'll do those. All right, so we got some inequalities to solve. So 3x minus 5 is greater than 1. This is problem 1. So we're going to add 5. I get 3x is greater than 5. Divide by 3. x is greater than 5 thirds. So they're just wanting us to solve it. I don't guess they're wanting us to write this in interval notation or graph the solutions. So... It didn't, didn't, oh, look at that. I'm, I messed up. I wrote the problem wrong. That should be a 1. See, so I put a 0 instead of a 1, so that's 6 divided by 3, so that's x greater than 2. All right, so for a problem 2, we've got negative 2x plus 4 is less than or equal to 8. So I'm going to subtract 4 to both sides, so I get negative 2x is less than or equal to 4. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2, so I get x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Remember, when you multiply or divide through by a negative number, you have to reverse the inequality symbol. All right, let's look at problem 3. I got 4 times x minus 1 is less than 2x plus 6. So 4x minus 4, clearing the parentheses, 2x plus 6, subtract 2x to both sides, add 4 to both sides, I get 2x is less than uh, 10, divide by 2, x is less than 5. All right, not too bad. So here I've got 5x minus 3 over 2, is greater than or equal to x plus 1. So I'm going to multiply everything by 2. So that's going to cancel that 2 out. So I'm left with 5x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 2x plus 2. Subtract 2x to both sides. Add 3 to both sides. So I get 3x is greater than or equal to 5. Divide by 3. I get x is greater than or equal to five-thirds all right so let me erase this and you know you could you could have paused the video and see if you got them all right all right so let's look at number five so I get seven minus two times x plus one is less than three x so that's going to be seven minus two x minus two is less than three x so let's see, let's write this 5 minus 2x is less than 3x, 7 minus 2. And then I'm going to add 2x to both sides. So 5 is less than 5x, divide by 5, and I get x. Well, let's, let's write it like this. We get 1 is less than 
x and I like to write it with the x first so I'll just write the x first and but remember the part that's open is pointing to the x so you have to make sure you get your symbol right but there's your answer all right okay so now we have the word problem so this might be a little more challenging so let's look at number one it says the number is increased by seven and the result is 15. find the number all right so x equals a number got to identify our variable and so it says the number is increased by seven so increased by that means we're going to add seven to the number and it is equal to or the result is 15 so that equals 15. so i'm going to subtract seven so i get x equal eight all right let's look at number two twice a number is decreased by four and the result is 10. so identify our variable x equals a number all right so it says twice a number twice a number is decreased by four so we're subtracting four and the result is 10. and so we add four to both sides so i get 2x equals 14 divide by 2x equals 7. and there's your solution all right so let's erase this so we have room to work the other problems <clears throat> All right, this is problem three. It says the sum of three consecutive integers is 51. Find the integers. All right, so, well, let's just let x equal the first integer. And then we, let's see, we've got three, so I need the second integer. And then I need the third integer. All right, so look at this. Say you got one, two, three, four, five, six, so on. You got a bunch of integers there. Let's just say, forget about the actual problem right now, but let's just say that's your first integer. And it's now the problem says consecutive. So that means if this is your first integer, that would be the second and that would be the third, right? Well, how do we get from this integer to this integer? Well, we're adding one to it right and then how do we get from this integer to the next one well for that one we got to add two so if x is our first integer our second integer would be x plus one and this one would be x plus two okay all right so it says the sum of three consecutive integers so that's x plus x plus one plus x plus two and it says that is equal to 51. And so now you solve. So you get 3x plus 3 equals 51. Subtract 3, you get 3x equals, uh, what was that, 48. Divide by 3, so we get x equals uh, 16. And then we have x plus 1 would be 17. And then x plus 2 would equal 18. So your consecutive integers is 16, 17, and 18. All right. All right, so let's, let's erase this. We ran out of room. All right, so for problem four, it says the length of a rectangle is three times its width. The length of a rectangle is three times its width. All right, so let's draw us a rectangle. We'll say this is L, which equals the length, and we will call this W, which is the width. All right, so it says the length of a rectangle is three times its width. So I'm going to let W equal width because that's what they're giving me the least least information about see they're telling me about the length they're saying the length is this so the one that you have the least information about which is the width that's usually the one you want to let the variable equal and so if w is the width then the length 
Well, what is it? The length of a rectangle is three times the width. So that's three times W. It says if the perimeter is 48 units, find the length and width. All right, so we know the perimeter of a rectangle is twice the length plus twice the width, right? So this is 48 is equal to twice the length, so 2 times 3W plus 2 times the width, which is W. And so I get 48 is equal to 6W plus 2W. So that's 8W equals 48. Divide by 8, I get W is equal to 6. And so that means that means the length is equal to 3 times 6, which is 18. So this is 6 by 18. Uh, they don't give us units. Uh, whatever units it is is what it would be. 16 by 18 feet, meters, whatever. Whatever it is. All right. All right, so we got one more word problem, then we're off to the graphing. The graphing will be, uh, hopefully that'll be pretty easy, the graphing. All right, it says a car rental company charges a flat fee of $25 plus 20 cents per mile driven. If a customer pays $45, how many miles did they drive? So we're gonna let X equal miles driven so a car rental company charges a flat fee of 25 and then 20 cents per mile. So it's 20 cents times the number of miles plus the flat rate of $25. And that is equal to, he paid a total of $45. So we want to see how many miles he drove. Well, we've got a decimal. So typically when you have a decimal, if you move to move the decimal one place to the right, because we want to clear the decimals to clear to move the decimal one place to the right, you multiply by 10 to move it two places to the right. You multiply by 100, three places would be a thousand and so on. So we're going to multiply everything through by 10. So that's 2x plus 250 equals 450. So I'm going to subtract 250 to both sides. So I get 2x equals 200 divide by two, so x would equal 100 miles. And there's your answer. So the word problems weren't very bad. Uh, that, that's, that, that's one thing that kind of surprised me of how easy this thing was, but you know, it is what it is. All right, so number one, let's graph y equals two x plus one. All right, so the way we're going to graph these, we've got 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So for this problem, we have a slope of 2 over 1, and we have a y-intercept of 0, 1. So we're going to use the, the y-intercept and the slope. So when I plot the point 0, 1, there's my y-intercept, and then remember, your slope, that's rise over run. So I'm going to go up two units and to the right one unit. And that would be my next point, rise over run. And so there's my graph. Let's look at problem two, y equals negative x plus three. So I've got a slope of negative one over one. I like to write the slope as a fraction so I can see the rise and the run. And then I have a y-intercept of 0, 3. Now, you might be wondering, well, why did you put the negative up in the numerator? How do you know it doesn't go in the denominator? It doesn't matter. You can put it on either one. You'll get the same answer. Okay? All right, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So we're going to plot our point 0, 3. And then the rise is negative 1, so I'm going down 1. The run is positive 1, so I go to the right 1, and there's my next point. And so this would be your graph. Okay? All right. So let's, let's work problems 3, 4, and 5. All right, so number three, I've got y is less than or equal to 2x minus 4. 
So what we want to do here is we want to actually graph y equals 2x minus 4. So let's do that. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So I've got a slope of 2 over 1 and a y-intercept of 0, negative 4. And so if I plot my y-intercept, if I plot my y-intercept, use rise over run up 2 over 1. Okay. I'll erase that line there. There's my graph. Now, this is an inequality. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a test point, and we're going to choose 0, 0. You need to pick some point. doesn't matter what you choose. You can choose whatever you want, whatever point you want. Don't choose a point that's on the line. Choose a point that's not on the line. And then we need to take this point and plug it back into our inequality and see if we get a true statement or a false statement. I pick zero. If you can pick zero, zero, pick zero, zero, because it's the, I mean, it's the easiest one to do. So you got zero is less than or equal to two times zero minus four. So zero less than or equal to negative four. And we can see that this is a false statement. So since it's a false statement, notice the point we chose was over here. And it gave us a false statement. So that means you shade the other side of it. All right. So that's the graph of three. All right. Just hang in there with me. You, you'll want to see this at the end. Um, all right, so let's look at four. So we've got y is greater than negative 3x plus 2. So I'm going to graph y equals negative 3x plus 2. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I've got a slope of negative 3 over 1 and a y-intercept of 0, 2. So let's plot the point 0, 2, and then I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, and to the right 1. And there's my other point. Now, you got to make sure when you draw this line, you got to draw it in as a dotted line because it's just greater than. It's not greater than or equal to. So if it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, it's a solid line. If it's just greater than or just less than, then it's a dotted line. And then we need a test point. We're going to test the point 0, 0. So we're going to plug that in, that 0 greater than negative 3 times 0 plus 2, which is 0 is greater than 2. And this is a true statement. And notice the point I chose was on this side of the line and I got a true statement so that's the side that I shade okay all right last problem and then I'm going to show you something that really 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 surprised me all right so number five we got y equals x plus two and we've got y equals negative two x plus three so this is just a this is a system of equations. Uh, one, let's see, I might need to let me write this. Let me do it up here. All right, so let's graph the first one, y equals x plus 2. So the slope is 1 over 1. My y-intercept is 0, 2. 0, 2, up 1, over 1. So there's that line. And then I have y equals negative 2x plus 3. Uh, so my slope is negative 2 over 1. My y-intercept is 0, 3. So I've got 0, 3. I'm going to go down 1, 2, and to the right, 1. And there's your, there's your graph. And I'm, I'm pretty sure they're probably wanting us to find that point there. So let's find that point. So that's x plus 2 equals negative 2x plus 3. 
So I'm going to add 2x to both sides, and I'm going to subtract 2 to both sides. So I get 3x equals 1, divide by 3x equal 1 third. And so now I need to get my y value. So y is equal to, so I've got 1 third, so I can take the 1 third, and I can plug it into that equation or that equation. It doesn't matter which one. I'll plug it into the first one because it's, it would just be easier. So I've got y equals one third plus two. If we get a common denominator, that's gonna be six, one, that's seven thirds. So that intersects at the point one third, seven thirds. So that would be the point one third, seven thirds. All right, so that's taking the test. Now, let me show you something that's shocking. Well, that, that really surprised me. All right, so I just paused the video. I had to go back and find them. But this problem, number three right here, this problem number three in simplifying expressions, this one right here. So remember, we worked this 6x minus 12 plus 8x plus 4. And so that was what, 14x 12, 4, hang on. Okay, yeah. So we get 14x minus 8. Look at the answer chat GP, GTP gave. They put 10x instead of 14x. So I thought that was interesting, that this thing would miss that problem. I don't know what happened, but yeah, chat GP, GPT uh, got it wrong. And then this one right here, remember we saw this, 4x minus 4 is less than 2x plus 6. So we bring the 2 over, that's 2x, add 4, that's less than 10, divide by 2, x is less than 5. And look what they gave us, x is less than 4. So that was the, that was the 2 I noticed uh, when I worked through them. Uh, that it just gave the wrong answers to those two. I was really, really surprised, really shocked. And I've, I've got a, I've got a couple videos that I want to, that I'm going to probably post where chat GPT saw some pretty complicated integrals and it gets them right. So, uh, yeah, and it misses this, but anyway. I hope you enjoyed the video. I might do some more of these. I might ask it to make me out a difficult algebra test and just kind of see the difference. Calculus test, trig test, just kind of see what it does. All right, so I hope you enjoyed it. Check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, subscribe, comment, and I will see you all in the next one. Later.